Hey friends, welcome back to your Tuesday edition of Hot News. We're gonna go over the latest tech news that's coming out, which includes a new GPU competitor, technically not a new one coming to the GPU market. We've got Nvidia potentially releasing the Super Series a little bit earlier than you were expecting, plus AMD's Ryzen 5000 mobile setup, as well as some information that we've got on the desktop side. So we'll do that after we talk about the sponsor for today's episode of Hot News. My friends, today's video is brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant allows you to engage and understand concepts in the realms of math, science, computer science, general logic in a way that is masterfully story told, but also in a way that keeps you coming back for more in a very addictive, interactive experience. As I mentioned, they have wide ranging topics such as mathematic fundamentals to quantitative finance to introduction to neuro networks to cryptocurrency those last two kind of key on my mind especially as we're moving into the ai age machine learning something that everybody should really have a fundamental concept of as well as cryptocurrency for obvious reasons so brilliant makes this fun by allowing you to understand the concepts and then apply them they believe that effective learning is active so they make it so that you're solving fun interactive problems by yourself so whether it is learning about neural networks or data structures or programming with Python, you're going to want to continue to use Brilliant on a daily basis simply because it makes it fun for you to learn. So you click the link in the video description to sign up for Brilliant for free. And the first 200 of you who click that link can get 20% off of the annual premium subscription. Again, check the link out, check Brilliant. It's a free membership to try. Just go ahead and see if any of these courses, especially in the scientific region or computer science region with regards to Neural nets could suit you. Now let's talk about that company that is re-entering the GPU desktop space with a PCI Express card they left 20 years ago, but they haven't been gone. Of course, I'm talking about Power VR GPU or at least imagination. So according to a press release that they put out 20 years after exiting the PC space and refocusing on mobile, the Power VR GPU made by Imagination Tech and used by Apple for its iPhones and iPads is now re-entering the PCI Express space with five companies targeting desktop, laptop, and cloud computing. My friends, we have yet another entrant to the GPU competition. We got AMD, we got Nvidia, we got Intel, and now we have imagination. High performance for cloud computing domestically and globally available soon. You can see 4K and 8K 3D rendering, high performance intelligent computing, adapt to multiple scenes, one-stop customization. And you can see right there in that PCI Express slot made by Inno Silicon, which is an interesting development right there. So they're saying they're using a highly innovative SOC and chiplet architectures. Inno Silicon has integrated newly launched IMG B-Series, BXT, multi-core GPU IP, and PCIe form factor GPU SOCs for desktop and data center applications, which is a lot of acronyms, hot dang. Essentially what this means is that they're gonna be using this multi-core technology that Imagination has come out, which is called IMG B-Series, which combines multiple GPUs to create the performance that they're expecting. So they're saying it delivers up to six teraflops of performance, which puts it in a mid-range GPU, but with a 30% reduction in power, a 25% area reduction over previous generations, and up to two and a half times higher fill rate than competing IP cores. So this does seem like it might be a legitimate entrant into the GPU market. And imagination hasn't been necessarily a slouch when it comes to producing GPUs. They just haven't been doing it in a consumer facing environment. But now with them coming out with their new GPUs that are supposed to be made not just for the cloud computing, but also desktops and laptops, we could potentially see another company come in and start making stuff that is a little bit different. This might be more professionally oriented than gaming oriented at the moment, but but we could just, I mean, competition is just good for everybody. So imagination making a new GPU. This kind of looks like a Zotac GPU, to be honest. I kind of like it. We'll see how this pans out if they decide to start making gaming oriented products or if they're gonna stick with their multi GPU setup and we'll we'll take it from there. But Nvidia has taken it from here with their move to TSMC. According to a DigiTimes report, they're saying that Nvidia is expected to move to TSMC seven nanometers in 2021. And in case you don't remember the backstory behind this, it goes a little something like this. Back when Nvidia was looking to make Ampere, they went to TSMC, they were like, hey, give us space on your boundary. TSMC said, ah, uh, AMD and Apple already got all of it. NVIDIA replied, get rid of them. We have money. Yeah, so do they. Why don't you, what, why don't you just wait? No, we're going to go to Samsung. Fine, do that. You won't. Oh, we will. And they did. 
they did go to Samsung. That's according to all of the information that's publicly available. We obviously don't know how the board meeting actually went down there, but apparently it was a power move by Nvidia to go over to Samsung. But now that Apple is moving to five nanometers for its A14 chip, it does appear that there is seven nanometer production availability on TSMC. And uh, according to all reports, Nvidia will just prefer it there. That's their home and that's where they're gonna go. Or maybe TSMC saw that Nvidia was willing to call their bluff and they lowered the prices like apparently Nvidia was potentially asking them for. Who knows? Who also knows when we're gonna get a full desktop graphics card from Intel, but we've got some more information about the Project Z graphics cards coming out in a size soft Sandra benchmark with a dual GPU that's shown up coming in at four teraflops of performance, 1,536 cores at 1 1.25 gigahertz. This means nothing as far as final performance, just that they're testing different variations of mixing and matching cards together. We'll have to wait a little while longer to see how it's gonna perform, just like we're we're gonna have to wait a little while longer to see how Ryzen 5000 performs on the desktop, but we got a leaked slide indicating that there might be a little bit of faster memory support based on Infinity Fabric improvements that have been made to Ryzen 5000 with potentially the ability to run DDR4 4000 on this Ryzen 5000 series GPUs. There's numbers, so it's all over the place, which it gets even worse. We're just, well, break that down in a second. But the end of the slide saying DDR4 4000 is to Ryzen 5000 series as DDR4 3800 was to AMD Ryzen 3000 series. Good luck. So we'll see how memory support happens, but you might be able to pick up a little bit faster RAM to get a little bit extra gaming performance out of your AMD chips, which somebody did get a little bit extra performance out of the Ryzen 9 5950X. They found that it overclocked to six gigahertz. Holy crap. And this apparently took place on a Hackintosh where they used, uh, this is a Mac OS benchmark for Geekbench where it shows it's running at six gigahertz on all 16 cores, which is insanely fast. However, there's an unanswered question of what type of cooling was used here. I would presume it's sub ambient cooling because you can't even hit six gigahertz on an Intel chip unless you're sub ambient. So that's what I'm expecting here. But I just, I have this little bit of reservation in me where I wanna know, was it water cooled? Was it regularly water cooled? Do these things have insane overclocking potential. Is Zen 3 the architecture that's finally available for overclocking? Let me know. I need, I need answers. But I wanted answers about the Ryzen 5000 U series processors, the ones that are gonna be coming out to mobile, and I got answers that I didn't want to hear. Because, as you might remember, AMD changed their desktop naming scheme to fit in more with what they were doing. Ryzen 5000 is what we're getting for the new generation, even though there's no mainstream 4000 series chips that aren't APUs. So it's a weird setup there. And the presumption was that AMD was doing it to get everything on the same page because their mobile stuff, which is the Ryzen 4000 U series, is based on Zen 2. Same with the APUs. The 4750G that I have is Zen 2 CPU with Vega graphics. So that's 4000. But they wanted to put everything on 5000 for Zen 3 so that the Ryzen 5000 5800X is a Zen 3 CPU. And then presumably the APU version would also be Zen 3, but no. That's not what we get. According to information that's just now coming out, while the Ryzen 7 5800U is gonna be Zen 3 with Vega graphics, the 5700U is gonna be Zen 2. The 5600U is gonna be Zen 3. The 5500U is gonna be Zen 2. The 5400U is gonna be Zen 3. And the 5300U is gonna be Zen 2. This doesn't help. This doesn't make any sense. This is worse, AMD. How do you not see that? What? I mean, the mobile stuff has to be called 5000. They can't because they already have the 4000. So they already messed that up. But this doesn't this, just say you're going to be confusing. All right. You're now the market leader, at least according to your own slides. So just say you're going to do market leader stuff like confuse the crap out of your customers. Intel's doing it so you can do it. It's totally fair. Just say it. Say it. Say it, AMD. You don't care. Just you, you want to mess with everyone. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. And that's apparently what Facebook wants to do when it comes to their Oculus platform for VR, because not only are they forcing everybody to use a Facebook sign in in order to use the Oculus Quest 2, which appears to be a great VR headset. It looks to be amazing. I'm just never going to buy one because of that Facebook login requirement. Well, apparently they also got rid of Oculus Go platform as well. This was according to John Carmack, who's the consulting CTO for Facebook Reality Labs, with him saying that the 
the Oculus Go platform is not going to get any sort of backwards compatibility, even though he fought for it because Facebook just wants to move ahead. Hey, you know that platform that we made? Yeah, get rid of it. It's dead to us now. Just like signing in with your Oculus account. You can't do that anymore. We need control of everything. So stop and use our thing. Sorry, Facebook can't do it. And I can't use my mouth thing anymore because this episode's hot news is over. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode. Get subscribed, stay up to date on all of the tech news, friends. Don't forget to check out today's sponsor for hot news. Don't forget to check out Brilliant at the link in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. And also, my friends, just learn. I'm a fan of learning. I, I encourage you, go learn things on Brilliant. Neural nets, they're gonna take over our lives, you know? Okay, Skynet's coming. You could be part of it. And that's gonna wrap it up. Hit the like button and I've already said all that, bye.